Today we're going to talk about a Linux distribution that I just found out about. It's been around for a little while. It's been in beta and a couple of days ago, I believe it was on the 7th, the uh, distribution made an announcement that they had their finished product and I saw that on DistroTube. We're going to talk about it right now. This is it. So I installed Rhino Linux. Rhino Linux. So according to the website, they, they made this uh, for a certain purpose. They made it for developers. If you're a developer and you like developing on Linux and you want a desktop that is nice and clean and fast and responsive and not KDE or GNOME or Cinnamon or Budgie, then you're going to like this distro. It looks really nice. I've used it a little bit over the past couple of days. I'm going to go over to rhinolinux.org. This is the main website. And so it says, uh, it says here on their site that Rhino Linux reinvents the Ubuntu experience as a rolling release distribution uh, atop a stable desktop environment. Packstall is at the very heart of the distribution, providing essential packages such as the Linux kernel, Firefox, Rhino Linux specific applications and theming. Now it does come with Flatpak and you can, you can enable that and you can use that. You can use a good old fashioned um, app to install. So this distribution is pre-installed with uh, with their own in-house desktop experience. Now they call this the unicorn desktop. It's based on XFCE. And if you're familiar with XFCE, you know that on any machine, it's gonna run fast, it's gonna be responsive and so forth. Oh, you can see back behind me, I know my picture down there is pretty small, but if you can see the laptop light over on this side of me, that is actually a 2012 Dell, um, Latitude E6400, and that is running right now. I just installed it this morning. It has uh, three gigs of RAM. It's got a hard drive that is uh, only 150 gigabytes. And back in the day when that was made, that was uh, that, that was an awesome laptop. So it's not so awesome now if you try to install something like Windows 10 or not that I would do that, but I have tried it just for kicks or any heavy Linux distribution like Garuda, which I have tried on there, even Garuda XFCE. Um, it looked nice, but it ran horribly slow. What I did is I installed Rhino on it this morning. That sucker flies. That's a, that's a what is it now, uh, 11 years old? And that thing flies around. Yeah, if you do some graphic intensive stuff or you do some, you know, run an app or have a bunch of tabs that's going to use a lot of uh, a lot of RAM yeah you're going to run into you know some lagginess but just doing the regular stuff like checking email going to YouTube and playing stuff it works great so I was able to bring this thing back to life I just had it you know sitting in the closet in a laptop bag and now now it's running great so that's perfect for developers it's the same desktop uh, regarding developers it says developers will fall in love with with our vast software repositories which are always up to date User repositories such as Packstall can help provide development libraries that are critical for your project. With Codium pre-installed in your system, you can begin doing what you do best instantly. It can be compared to, now this is just something I either read or heard somewhere, that it could be compared to the AUR Arch Linux. Okay, but um, this is the, uh, the desktop here. Let's change the wallpaper again. This is XFCE, but it's heavily modified. You've got your... Uh, your dock over here, I believe this is uh, Plank. You right-click on the desktop, you get a menu here. At the bottom, there's an applications menu that comes out, and you got all your applications right here. But that's not the only way to get to them. Uh, just like GNOME or like Mac OS, you know, those desktops. You click on this application grid, and lo and behold, you get a full-screen list of all your applications. This is everything that's installed right now as far as apps goes. So it's a full page of stuff. A lot of it's settings. you got your terminal. Uh, terminal emulator, your task manager. Let's see how that's going right now. Task manager, CPUs at 7%, 2%, 6%, 131 processes, memory. Let me expand this thing right here. Memory is at 1.2 gigs. So it's a little heavy for a desktop environment based on XFCE. Uh, when I first booted this up, it was about 580. But I have Firefox open with a couple of tabs, I think. And I got this program open here, the task manager. But this has four gigs of RAM. It's running with that. It's working fine. File manager is very nice. It is Thunar. It's a light file manager that runs very smooth and nice and has some features that, that we can use. 4.18.6 is the version number. Now, one thing I noticed is that when you first open Thunar on this distro, hidden files are showing. I don't know if it's like that because it's a distribution meant for developers that use and they just put everything out there. So I'm gonna go to view, 
and go down to show it in files and click that and make it uncheck and now we're good. So let's see what else we got. The Ristretto Image Viewer, X-Terminal. It's got two or three consoles here. You got the Terminal Emulator. It just says Terminal Emulator. Let's see which one it is. Up and about shows that it's the XFCE4 terminal 1.0.4, and it's got a transfer and background. It's kind of cool. Let's change the background real quick. Let's go to desktop settings. The wallpapers are going to pop up right here. They have some pretty nice wallpapers, pretty nice ones. They have light ones, they have some dark ones. They got some of the older uh, XFCE ones here. They got some nice purple ones. I like that. It's pretty nice. Uh, this one has the Rhino logo on it. Can you see that? Right here. So that's pretty cool. I like the way the dog goes away. If you put a, if you run it over, we'll win around. Around. Yes, I'm having fun. This stuff is fascinating to me. I love I love messing with uh, new distributions. But I like trying stuff out. But I also like to install, you know, newer distros that come out or newer versions of distributions on VirtualBox so I can try it out. And if I like it, then, you know, I got, got some machines back there that I'll use, you know. Let's see what other ones I got. There's the one called Xterm, just a small black console. And we have another one. This one is XFCE terminal, but I thought we already had that open. It actually looks exactly like the first one that we opened over here. Yep, the same. So tricking us, tricking us, guys. That's kind of silly. I don't know about that. But they're calling one XFC terminal. This one's called terminal emulator. And then you got external. I think I just need one. I don't know about you guys. And I usually don't care if it's running Bash or CSH or Fishy or whatever the hell there is out there. Well, it does what I need it to do. You also have a system profiler and benchmark application. It's got system information, computer summary, and showing me how horrible this computer is, which is not a lie. File systems. This is pretty nice. You got it all condensed into one place. Kind of reminds you of uh, Windows Device Manager. But, you know, one thing about Windows, they go years and years without updating their apps. You got Windows 11. Just looking at it, it looks nice, right? When you bring up Device Manager, it looks like shit. Part of my German, guys. Sorry about that. Because it, it's just, they never they never update stuff. All the behind the scenes apps and little uh, monitors and uh, system information screens, all that. They just leave it all the same from 1952 or whenever it's from. I like this right here, the search bar. If you click on this J looking icon, you get the search bar up. So that's pretty neat. You know, you can search for apps. You search for terminal. Oh, so I know a lot of you guys out there like to bring that up. You can also hit... Uh, the super and s key you know it also brings it up it's just as easy to click the and you got your desktop switcher this right here kind of reminds me of well you know kde i think has something like this if i'm not mistaken i don't use any kde so i just gotta remember um mac os has the stage manager and it's similar but a lot nicer but this isn't bad this is pretty cool you can switch desktops like this now i'm on desktop number two i have nothing on there so i'm going back to desktop number one where i have firefox the website says that it's ubuntu based uh rolling release community maintain open source and there's so many distributions based on ubuntu it's not even funny kind of like it it's got the uh unicorn desktop which is what we were just clicking around on it's got a new dashboard it's got a beautiful new app grid uh, to me it yeah it looks nice but it just reminds me of gnome or pop os or mac os or KD and KD Plasma, you can you can switch your app menu to a full screen app menu. That one's a little different though. So you got all kinds of cool, uh, cool stuff. You have down here at the bottom, it tells you, uh, gives you some keyboard shortcuts. Super plus A is the app grid. Let's go on, let's see. Super S, we already checked that one out. That's the search bar. Super D is a dashboard slash expose. Oh, okay, yeah, got the dashboard. All right, cool. They got some shortcuts set up. I'm sure they're quite different from other desktops or window managers. Uh, but, you know, it's like anything else. You know, you got to get used to it, and then you become a professional at it, right? Go back home. See what this is. It says, why Rhino? Rhino Drop. Uh-oh. Did it copy an airdrop? Enhance your productivity with Rhino Drop. Rhino Drop allows you to effort effortlessly send files across devices connected to your local network. Rhino Drop stores no images sent through its platform and operates on a peer-to-peer -peer connection with encrypted 
trying to so you can rest assured your data is safe. So it's not like AirDrop, it's more like Warpinator and Linux Mint. You know, this looks like it's going through a network and then it can go to other computers. Perfect for developers, we already know that. You can download it off to the site, which is where I got it. You got rhinolinux.org releases. You go there, you got releases, you're gonna have a beta, the beta version, because this is actually a rolling release. You know, what I did is I went to the folder below 2023.1 and I downloaded the very top 2.08 gigabytes. So it's not huge, but it gives you enough, uh, you know, it gives you what you need to uh, get around your desktop without any issues. Let's try this one. That looks pretty nice. Look at that. Lots of mountains going on and uh, clouds. Now I clicked on settings manager and this is really nice. I want to stop right here and take a second to just comment on the the window decorations here the icons uh the dark mode i checked out the light mode is kind of like a cream color um it almost blinded me so i switched it back to dark mode you know it reminds me of it reminds me of linux mint's system settings very similar i've installed xfce uh, tons of times over the years but i never stick with it because it's freaking ugly Sorry guys, but XFCE is generally pretty damn ugly. This on the other hand, you know, it's got the plank dock over here. Um, the way they got it set up, the theme and everything, it's it's really nice. It runs nice, it looks cool. Um, it's got some awesome wallpapers, which is kind of rare. You know, I'm, I'm generally a KD Plasma user and they came with the, the same wallpapers and they just get boring. Sorry, I love Plasma, but the wallpapers, they need to do something. These ones are nice. You got some minimalistic ones, you got dark ones, you got light ones. Power manager, you got that. No surprise. Click on all settings and you go back. Pulse audio, volume control. Mouse and touchpad. I mean, just the regular stuff you're always going to see. Windows manager tweaks. Now that's the same icon we see in GNOME. You guys have seen that before. And you got some stuff. Cycling focus, accessibility, workspaces, placement, and composite. It's, this has a lot of access to settings where you can change anything you want on this. This is really nice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep using it. Probably not on this virtual machine, but on that laptop back there, because it's you know, I want to see how it runs on real hardware. It's running nice on this virtual machine. And it's running nice on that hard on that uh, laptop back there, albeit it's 11 years old. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna click around on it and do some things, you know, watch some videos and movies. I'm even gonna try installing OBS Studio on Caden Live and creating a video on it. See how bad it is. It's probably gonna be horrible, and it's not gonna be Rhino Linux's fault. It's gonna be that old laptop. But you know, I'm gonna try. You know, I, I like doing experiments, so I'm gonna do that. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you liked the video. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right now. For now, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, click on like and subscribe. And if you hated it, don't subscribe or don't like it. But if you can tell me why you don't like it, I'd appreciate it because that'll help me make these videos better. All right. We'll see you later. Have a good night.